My name is Jelena Havelka. I work at the Institute of Psychological Sciences at the University of Leeds. And in this podcast, I'm going to talk about cognitive consequences of bilingualism as one of the currently quite lively issues and debates in psychology. This podcast will have three parts in which I'm going to discuss following topics. First topic will be definition of bilingualism and description of different types of bilingualism. The second topic will deal with the process of becoming bilingual or also is known as a process of second language learning. And then finally, I'm going to consider some of the cognitive consequences of bilingualism on a language system and on cognitive system in general. So let's start with the first topic of the podcast, which is definition and types of bilingualism. Before I start, I would like to say a few words about why would we care? Why do we want to study bilingualism and second language acquisition? Well, there are many reasons, but I'm going to sum up two main ones. First one is that simply most of world population is bilingual or multilingual. As you can see from the map, uh, all the colored parts represent the countries that are effectively functionally bilingual. And some of them, like the ones marked in purple, are even officially declared themselves as being multilingual. Now, given that our higher cognitive functions such as thinking and problem solving and reasoning and memory are largely mediated through language use, it is logical to ask whether being able to speak more than one language is going to have effect on how these functions work and how do we proceed thinking or remembering things if our knowledge is coded in more than one language. So if we want to have general theory of a human mind, we have to be mindful that sometimes that mind speaks with more than one language. The other reason is somewhat more applied. Simply, so many people want to learn languages because they want to travel, because they need it for work, etc. And here I have example of the numerical distribution of four most dominant languages in the world and the number of people who speak them as their first and as their second language. As you can see, a lot of people want to learn other languages, which is why understanding how we do that can help us improve educational practices and make the process that anybody who has tried learning another language as an adult knows can be somewhat slow, often boring and a bit painful.